Hey, welcome back to another quarantine tutorial. I'm gonna dive right in. I'm gonna show you how I would take a, um, a neo soul approach to chopping up some vocals and creating some ambient texture underneath uh, a groovy track. So first I'll play the track for you. Here's the track. thinking is it would be cool to add some uh, more ambient vocal texture underneath this thing um, so what I did is I went in the booth real quick and I just literally hummed some melodies um, one take in the software uh, nothing special there's no lyrics it's just me humming stuff and I'll play you what I've hummed Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing special. La, 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 la. I'm doing that. On top of this. So all the runs, all that stuff, it doesn't matter. This is not about how good of a vocalist I am or anybody else is. This is really just about some information in the computer because we're going to turn this into something completely different anyways. First thing we want to do, or first thing that I do, is when I hum something like this in, I just want to make sure I've got a little bit of uh, compression, a little bit of EQ. So with the EQ, I've just taken out some of the uh, low end information here so it's not so rumbly in the bottom. Um, from about 200 hertz down, I've just filtered out. Um, and then um, a compressor, uh, I've just done some basic compression. Really, you know, you can just load a preset. Um, like this is nothing. Um, special all it is is just to control the dynamics a little bit you can just pick any compressor and the next thing that we need to do is we need to jump on some uh, maybe some pitch correction so you hopefully know the, the key of your song um, the key of my song happens to be in the key of E so I'm gonna go that's E major so I'm gonna go pitch correction uh, mono and I'm just using the stock plug in here here it is we're gonna go uh, major scale E and I'm gonna drive this down so that it's kind of aggressive. Let's listen. It's uh, definitely creating the pitch, a desired pitch correct sound. We'll move on. Um, the next thing I'm probably gonna do here is use a vocal transformer. Um, right in the same area of pitch, you'll go down, you see vocal transformer. For those of you that are familiar with uh, some of the sound toy stuff, like a uh, little altar boy, this is kind of similar. It allows me to like transpose the, the, the pitch up or down. Um, also the formant, which create, is the tone of the uh, vocal. So for instance, <laughs> so I went up plus 12, which is uh, an octave up. <laughs> Now, if I move the formant control here, what it'll do is change the tone of that pitched up vocal. Let's listen. Actually, I like the way four sounds. So now this uh, area down here, the wet and dry, just blends the original signal with the uh, with the process signal. So I'm gonna I want a little bit of that original signal um, to come through. Uh, I definitely want the focus to be the high signal, but we're gonna, I want a little bit of it to come through. So all the way to the left is going to be dry, all the way to the right is going to be wet. I'm looking at around 80% wet, so we get a little bit of the dry signal, we get a little bit of that original low signal. Um, let's listen. Cool. Now, we'll add one more effect to this thing. We'll go reverb, my trusty space designer reverb and so i'll go grab a preset like always go to warped effects um and i will go let's see moving spaces um and we just pick one flamed out let's see what that sounds like i say we go with it i say we go with it and then just kind of see where we land because there's so much here we'll spend all day here so let's go with it and maybe just 
I'm gonna pull, shrink the decay so it's not going on so long. Cool, so we got something that's kind of washing over the vocal. And uh, again, all the little settings and stuff that I'm just exploring, um, I'm not looking for anything in particular. I, I just want something that gives me a vibe and then I keep it moving. So at this stage is a good stage to go ahead and commit. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna commit. I've got a bunch of effects on here. It's giving me a vibe. We're gonna commit. So we're gonna go bounce in place. And again, I'm doing this because I'm, I'm practicing committing to where I'm headed. And because what happens when you practice that is even when you kind of run into problems, you start figuring out ways to work those problems out because you can't go back. And then it, it just pushes creativity. So we're done with this channel. We're gonna delete it and we're gonna com commit to whatever this is. So now what I wanna do, first of all, let's give myself some volume. Um, let's turn it up, gang, 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 cool. It's nice and loud, nice and full. And we're, we're gonna resample it. Um, we, I kind of showed you this in the first tutorial when we were working with Rhodes. Um, it's very, very useful, especially with doing these vocals. So let's take a listen to what we have. And as I'm listening, I'm just gonna get my scissors tool and I'm gonna chop. And I'm in no specific place. I'm not concerned with where I chop. I'm just looking maybe at obvious places where the waveform seems to be coming to an end. So I've just made some chops. And again, um, I try to focus on not overthinking the process. I just kind of go in, make some edits. I can always tweak later, but part of not overthinking it leaves room for things that just accidentally happen. So let's see what we get. So now I've got how many chops? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chops. We're gonna take all eight of those chops Right click, take us over to convert to sample track. Go down here, convert to sample track. Um, inside of here, I need this number here to say ten, uh, to say eight. Right now it says 10, so I'm gonna back up two. One, two, that puts me at eight. That means that all eight of these chops will now end up on uh, my keyboard and it will start, the first chop will start on C1. And if I come down here, now I should have a sampler track that has given me eight track, uh, chops. Let's take a listen. Let's solo it. We got it, okay? So now if I go over to my ESX, this sampler track, we'll go to ESX. And also, you, you can also uh, adjust things here that will create uh, changes too. For instance, this is the glide. If I wanna glide from one note to another, I turn this up. Right, it creates a little more of a synthy effect. So you can really start to mangle this thing and make it to where you can't even really tell what it is. Um, now I'm gonna add an effect to this sampler track. Um, and all I'm gonna do is just roll off some of the top end to give us that uh, underwater effect and that, you know, I'm not sure what it is sound. Let's listen. Now, all we need to do is play our track let's go back to our track and see what we can you know kind of vibe with let's listen ready and techniques is more important than even the the end product because even with what I do sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but the more I practice the techniques um, the more it kind of pushes the create the creativity and it allows me to take something simple and make it complex or take something complex and simplify it um, but I feel like the techniques are the key and practicing those techniques are key what time better than now <laughs> 